How to make a buffer using PyQGIS and processing algorithm. So first a disclaimer, I'm not an expert on PyQGIS. I'm just wanting to share how I figured out how to do some buffer and some cases along the way. Also, I'll be talking about the 100 days of PyQGIS challenge I will be doing, which ties a little bit with the purpose of showing this video for everybody to hopefully learn something new. So I have a QGIS window already open and I'll add a OpenStreetMap backdrop. So you can use the status bar here and just right osm and click here to add a standard i'll zoom to where i am located right now which is honduras and i'll change the projection to something more suitable for this part of the world which is 32616 which is a projected coordinate system now this is very important because when we work with a lot of the processing algorithm or all of them we need them to be in units like meters and feet or whatever so i usually work with aviation stuff so i'll try to do something that is a little bit generic but based on the same aviation things that I have done in the past. So first of all, I'm going to create just a temporary layer as a point and I'm going to call it points and I'll use 32616 and I'll just add one field that is going to be a buffer meters. We're going to use it later called the decimal and just leave all the defaults and click OK. So I got a point and what I will do is just add some random points. So I see some airports here. So let's say this one 6,500 this one i'll buffer it later for 9,000 meters maybe this one i'll do 7,500 maybe i find something here in the middle i'll do this one for 8,000 meters and finally probably something here along this here you go this one i'll do for 4,500 got one two three four five points okay probably one here this airport i'll do this one for 8,500 and i'll save these edits because we're going to be working with this layer okay so i got the points now we got a buffer and you may already have a layer to do this one thing that we normally can do is just go to the processing toolbox we can search for buffer click on the buffer and then we can select our layer of points and then you can see that there are some defaults that are there already so if we don't touch anything else the distance will be 10 meters. So that's a really small buffer. And the segments is five. This is every quarter of a circle. So if you got, you know, 90 degrees divided by five, it means that you're going to have 18 degrees between each of the segments. And then, you know, end cap style, joint style, meter limit. Well, I'm working with points. So at this point, it's not really that important. And if we click run, we'll get a result. It's going to be added into our layer here, panel. And then the neat thing is that if we click on the history, we can click on it and we have some processing algorithm here that we can copy and paste or use whatever. But I'm going to go step by step and try to, you know, demystify what is actually happened. So the first thing to do is actually to open the Python console. So you can go to plugins, Python console, you can have it anywhere along this line. So usually it starts like this. If you write anything in this part, it's going to be shown here. But normally when we are working with some scripts, it's better to open the um, editor here so we can work and then run and save and stuff. So it's a little bit easier to do that. Let's go to the documents and check about the buffer. So if we go to the QGIS documents and I'm working with the 3.22 version, so I'll use those documents. You can search here for for a buffer, which is right here, go to buffer and it tells you what you need, what are the parameters. So this is the names that we're going to be using in the algorithm. So here it tells you that everything is a default except for the input layer. And even though here the output is a default, in order to create a layer, we actually need to tell it that we want to have a layer so that's kind of not really a default but if we don't put anything else it's going to work the first thing that we need to do is go back to QGIS and say okay we need to buffer these layers so i'll just remove whatever we had first we just have the points and the osm standard just as a backdrop i'll zoom to this layer here and what we need first is okay if you go to the cheat sheet we can see that there are some code snippet that we need to add if we want to run outside of the PyQGIS console but i'm not going to do that and if we go directly to the processing algorithm it tells you that you need uh some things that you can do and that you need to put from QGIS import processing but in reality 
you don't really need to do that. You can just write it right away. Okay. So what we need to get is the layer. So to get the layer, I'll just put a variable called layer. We're going to call it from the project and we're going to get an instance instance because it's only one project here. And what we want to do is we want to get the map layers by name and we're going to buffer the points, right? So this is what we have. So if we click run, it's going to do something, but we cannot see what it's doing. So what we will do is just print the layer to see what's happening. So it's telling us that we got a vector layer that is called points and is a memory layer. Of course, it's just a temporary scratch layer there. And you can see that this is returning a list. Now, if you don't know that this is a list, you can always use the type this is from Python and click run. It tells you it's a list. Okay, perfect. So we don't want the list. We want the first layer. So to retrieve, there's only one point layer. So we can just say, okay, actually, let's call this input because we're going to use it later. It's going to be equal to the layer variable and we want to get the first ones the only layer there so let's try this again and let's print the input okay there it is so we got the vector layer itself now to run the processing algorithm we are going to be doing the following okay let's go to the documents to see what's happening and I'm going to go back and forth between the documents because I really want to show how you can get the information from the documentation itself. Okay, so let's go to the documents now. So if we return to the vector geometry part of the documentation, if you scroll down, it tells you what is the Python code that you're going to need. So it tells you you need to put import processing, but in reality, you don't really need that. We just need to copy this part here. and instead here we need the algorithm id and to get this there are several ways you can do it i can just hover over processing here but then i need to copy native buffer so if i do it from the documentation from the project itself QGIS, then i can just copy the algorithm id and replace it here so already have that I'm going to use the native buffer and I need to do the parameter dictionary. Okay. So to work with this, I'll just put it enter. Okay. Move this and have some space in between and I'll put my parameters here. So for start, I'll just add the minimum parameters that are required. So in this case, I'm going to use all of the defaults. So if I go back to the documentation, it tells me that everything is a default. Well, Actually, the output isn't, and we're going to see that we're going to require it. So the name that we require here is input. I'll copy that. So that's uh, it's a dictionary. So we need to put something like this. The names, it's a string. And then we need to tell it what it is. We already have the variable called input. So we will use that. Since everything is supposed to be a default, then we can just click run but we're missing the output. Okay, so let's add the output itself. So I'll add a comma. And for the output, I can just go here and I say, well, I'll call it an output. So I'll copy this one. Put it in between the quotes here. But how do I call this here? And I'm going to work with temporary layers for this video only, okay? So if we go here to the vector geometry part here, it tells you that the default is to create a temporary layer. Great, but how do I specify that? And this is where we have this part here. So if we copy this and we put it here, but we need to put it in between quotes, then my algorithm is going to run, but I'm not seeing here on my map canvas because I haven't told QGIS that you need to load it up. So what we're missing is we need to load it up. So usually we will need to store this value, let's say in a variable, we're going to call it result. And then what we're going to say is we want to add this to our map. So we're going to say, okay, to the QGIS project, 
to this particular instance we want to add the well missing here something add the map layer which is called result and we need to get the output okay, and i'll show you why is this thing like this okay okay let's close i'll comment this one first and let's do something let's print the result so print result to see what are we getting so what we have in the result variable is a dictionary where we have the output and to this output we have where this layer is stored so what we're doing right now when we uncomment this line is telling it we want to add result and we're going to get it by this key output so it's going to get the vector layer so that is essentially what we're doing so once we do that and we click run you have your buffer so if i zoom to this let's see where my points are because 10 meters is really really small but there you got the buffer okay now if you notice the name buffered is already taken from this temporary output and we already knew that this was going to happen because the label buffer is for the output now what if we want to change the name Okay, so what we need to do in that case is instead of having this, we might create a variable called output. Okay, and instead of this temporary output, I'll just use the variable output here. And for the name, I don't recall from where, but when you want to use memory layers, you do something like this. Then if you click run, you got your layer there but it just gets you know whatever you have for the variable but then here you can add actually a name so you can put buffer so it's adding it and what if i want to add okay i want to know buffer and i want to know which layer is so it's input but this i need to get the name of this layer so something like this and you got buffer points so now you have a layer that you can buffer you can change the name and the points let's do a fix distance because we don't want the default default is 10 meters that's not what we want so let's take all of this from our map and how do i add the distance that i require so let's change the distance and let's work with the segments well so if we go back to the documentation you can see that the key here is to add this name distance and segment so let's add the distance first try that out Okay, so got the distance and let's say I want to use 5,000 meters. Okay, and remember that after each one of those keys, you need to put a comma. Then we can run it. Zoom. There you go. Got 5,000 meters. So it, it looks okay, but then, you know, the segments, they don't look really circular. Now, if we use the measure angle here, I'll enable the snapping. You see snap here center i'll just move it here to this window and here got 18 degrees because it's 90 divided by 5 is 18 okay so let's say i want to have it every degree so i need 90 segments so i'll just put it in the same order so i got segments and i'll add 90 because i'm you know compulsive about this click to run it and now we got our buffer point and now it looks a little bit better on the circular thing now this is just doing a fixed distance but what if we want to use the actual field that we added you know this point layer has a field called buffer underscore m for meters so let's say we want to use that um expression or that uh, values for each of the points so we have a variable thing okay now, this is where it gets a little bit tricky because if we go to the documentation itself, it tells us, okay, for the distance, it can be a number. And then there is this thing here, which is the icon for expression. And if you go and use the tool itself, so if I return here and I click on the buffer, I could set up an expression. But how do I do that 
Okay, so you can search for the help and to do that, you can use this part here and let's say, okay, for processing, we want to get the algorithm help for native buffer because that's the name of this algorithm native buffer we click enter and then we have the you now it's a little bit more of a coded version of the help but this is how this part works then let's see for the distance what we can use it says that you can use an integer it makes sense you know it's number a float as well but then we have something here that is called qgs property so what is this qgs property so for that we might need to go to pyqgs thing okay so it's 3.22 here and then let's search for qgs property if i click here then it tells me it stores objects properties and what we can do from here is we can set it from an expression so from expression and it's going to return a qgs property which is what i need so basically what we need to do is okay the distance instead of having a set number we want to use qgs property we got to do it from an expression and this is how you would write it in the expression calculator thing so i'll just put it in between quotes and close and remember that field names are in double quotes so if we do something like this so we'll be able to run remember to put the comma where it is to needs to go and then voila we got our buffer points based on a field perfect so now we can play a little bit around with this and let's say we want to multiply this times five now we got something like this okay but now what if we want to dissolve this result? Okay, so I don't want to have this. I want to have the dissolve option. So if we go to the documentation, back to the vector geometry, if I want to dissolve, then I need to use this keyword, copy that, and it's a Boolean, so it's either true or false. So by default, it's false. So I'll just add, okay, so my dissolve, I want it to be true. So I'll turn this off, this off, run. And there you go you got the result with the dissolve and now you have done like five or six different cases so going back to the 100 days of pyqgs this is what i want to do for the next 100 days so for the next 100 days i want to really get into the pyqgs part of things so i kind of script enough to copy paste and, and things like that from gs stack change or some other parts but i really want to understand how to do all of these parts and also get to see uh, what's the gap between the documentation and what you really need to do and try to improve that as well. So hopefully, while I document all these 100 days of PyQJS, I can get really better. And at the end, I really want to have like a, an aviation plugin specific for my needs, but maybe I'll do much more than that and have something that is of wider use for the GIS community. So hopefully, um, you'll stick around for the 100 days of PyQJS and subscribe to the channel for the rest of the days. There's also general GIS stuff on the channel. There's also some aviation stuff. So if you're into that, then go into the channel, subscribe, hit on the bell so you get the notifications. And I'll try to do all of these PyQJS and see how far I can take it. So thank you for being with me and see you on the next video.